Chapter 6 Thanksgiving On Thanksgiving Day, Mr. and Mrs. Salazar decided to visit their friend in the old neighborhood. It was a last-minute decision they made after dinner was over. When it felt to everyone that there was something missing, the Salazar family had known a lot of people in their old apartment building. And there was always someone to say hello to or to invite in for some coffee and conversation. Antonio and Maria Isabel were delighted. On the long way, subway ride, Maria Isabel thought about all of the things she'd tell Clara and Virginia about her new school. As soon as they got to the Hernandez apartment, Maria Isabel asked if she could go and visit her friends. She ran upstairs to the third floor to Virginia's apartment. Her next door neighbor said Virginia had gone to have Thanksgiving dinner at her grandparents. So Maria Isabel went to see if Clara was home. When Clara opened the door, her face broke into a big smile and she hugged Maria Isabel. Maria Isabel thought Clara had changed a lot. Then she realized that her friend was wearing makeup. Clara wanted Maria Isabel to meet her cousin's cousin who lived next door. She had just arrived from Puerto Rico. Her name is Carmen and she's 13. I know you'll like her, Clara said as she rang the doorbell. Carmen answered the, f the door. What a pretty friend you have, she exclaimed as she led the two girls into the apartment. She looked at Maria Isabel and added, Come with me. I'll make you even prettier. Carmen went into the room and came back with a plastic box full of makeup. She sat Maria Isabel down in front of a mirror and started to work on her face. Carmen painted Maria Isabel's lips, put some blush on her cheeks, and applied some eyeshadow. Then... She brushed Maria Isabel's hair back and pinned it with flowers and a beret. Carmen is going to be a hairdresser, said Clara. Isn't she good? And a makeup artist, Carmen added. Someday I'm going to work in Hollywood and do the makeup for all the big stars. And you'll know them, you'll know them all, Clara said excitedly. Carmen went back into her room to get some magazines. She told the girls all sorts of things about the movie stars in the magazines and about how she would make up each one. An hour had gone by before Maria Isabel knew it. I have to wash my face, she said. My mother doesn't want me to wear makeup yet. No, don't wash your face, said Carmen. I'll take most of it off with a tissue. Carmen wiped off the makeup, leaving only a trace behind. Maria Isabel got up to leave. Wait, don't go yet, Carmen said, and she dabbed some perfume on Maria Isabel's wrist. Thanks a lot, Carmen. I hope I'll see you again before you go to Hollywood, Clara said. Clara walked Maria Isabel back to the Hernandez apartment. They walked slowly, trying to stretch their remaining time together. How come you never call me? Oh, Virginia, or Virginia either. Clara finally asked her. Mama doesn't want us to use the phone unless we have to, but I'll ask if I can call you Sunday, she replied. And I'll call you on, on the Sunday after that, Clara said as they reached the Hernandez's doors. On the way home, Maria Isabel thought of all of the things that she didn't tell Clara about her new school, especially about her teacher, who always seemed to be ang so angry with her. They'd had such a good time that she had forgotten all about school. She had already... She was already looking forward to calling Clara on Sunday. Maria Isabel was smiling quietly to herself when suddenly Antonio said, It looks like your friends think I'm carnival instead of Thanksgiving. Maria Isabel tried to bury her face in the coat, in her coat. She should have washed her face after all. But her father just laughed. Leave your sister alone, Antonio. Chabelita is going to be a very pretty young woman someday. Mr. Salazar leaned over and hugged his daughter. But that day hasn't come yet. Right, right, Chabelita? Maria Isabel saw that her mother was smiling too. And then she knew that there really were good reasons to be thankful on this Thanksgiving. Chapter 7. The Winter Pageant Everything at school now revolved around plans for the winter pageant. The class was making wreaths and lanterns. The teacher explained to the class that Christmas is, cele is, a, is celebrated differently in different countries and that many people don't celebrate Christmas at all. They talked about Santa Claus and how he is called St. Nicholas in some countries and Father Christmas in others. The class also talked about the Jewish feast of Hanukkah that celebrates the 
re rededication of the temple of Jerusalem. And about the special meaning of, my, of the nine candles of the Hanukkah menorah. The teacher had asked everyone to bring in pictures or other things having to do with the holidays. A lot of kids brought in photographs of their families by their Christmas trees. My Myra brought in pictures of New Year's Day in Santo Domingo. Michelle brought in a picture of herself sitting on Santa's lap when she was little. Gabriel brought in photos of the Three Kings, Three Kings Day Parade in Miami, Florida. He had been there last year when he went to visit the Cuban gra his Cuban grandmother. Marcos brought in a piñata shaped like a green parrot that his uncle had brought back from Mexico. Emmanuel showed everyone a photo album of his family trip to Israel and Esther brought in cards her grandfather had sent her from Jerusalem. One day, Suni Paz came to the school. She sang Christmas songs from different countries and taught the class to sing a Hanukkah song, the candles of Hanukkah. Maria Isabel went home humming softly, Hanukkah, Hanukkah, let us celebrate. The bus trip seemed a lot shorter as the song ran through her head. It almost felt as if she had traveled to all those different countries and had celebrated all those different holidays. Maria Isabel was still singing while she made dinner and set the table with our menorah, fine potato lakes, our clay trumpets, let us celebrate. Her voice filled the empty kitchen. Maria Isabel was so pleased she promised herself that she'd make a snowman the next time it snowed and she'd get it finished before the garbage man picked up the trash and dirtied up the snow. But after Sunipa's visit to the school, the day seemed to drag by more and more slowly. Maria Isabel didn't have anything to do during rehearsal since she didn't have a part in Amal. The teacher decided that after the play, the actors would sing some holiday songs, including Maria Isabel's favorite about the Hanukkah candles. Since she didn't have a part, Maria Isabel wouldn't be asked to sing either. It didn't seem to matter much to Tony and Jonathan, the other two kids, who weren't in the play. They spent rehearsal time reading comics or whispering to each other. Neither one spoke to Maria and she was too shy to say anything to them. The only fun she had was reading her lit library books. Somehow her problem seemed so small compared to Wilbur the pig. He is in danger of becoming the holiday dinner. Maria Isabel felt the only difference was that the character in the book always seemed to find answers to the problems while she couldn't figure out what to do about her own. As she cut out the bells and stars for decoration, Maria Isabel daydreamed about being a famous singer. Someday she would sing in front of a large audience and her teacher would feel guilty that she had not let Maria Isabel sing in the winter pageant. But later Maria Isabel thought, my teacher isn't so bad. It's all a big misunderstanding. If only there was some way I could let her know. Even if I'm not a great singer someday, it doesn't matter. All I really want to be myself and not make the teacher angry all the time. I just want to be in the play and to be called Maria Isabel Salazar Lopez.